This Let's Edit with Media Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. And by Boris FX, a leading developer of visual effects, titling, video editing, and workflow tools and plugins for broadcast, post-production, and film professionals. And by Rampant Design Tools, creators of QuickTime-based style effects for video and designed to significantly enhance content for editors, visual effects artists, and motion graphic designers. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial and in this lesson I want to wrap up our talk on vertical video inside of Avid Media Composer. Now the example that we were using was videos that we needed to edit together to send to a delivery platform like Snapchat. They accept videos that are in the 9 by 16 aspect ratio, meaning that they are higher than they are wide. And we have the ability to do that inside a Media Composer with custom projects. And in this lesson, I said we were going to backtrack a little bit because I wanted to talk about how we would get in and transcode that media if we wanted to do that inside of Avid Media Composer. Then we're going to move on to exporting. And then just at the end, we're going to wrap it up by me throwing these clips into Adobe's Media Encoder to stream them, to send them to Snapchat. Now before we go on, I want to remind you that these tutorials are designed to get in and take a very in-depth look at very specific aspects of editing inside of Avid Media Composer. But sometimes you just need to get the information and get yourself up and running lightning fast. Well if that's the case, head on over and check out my Mac Pro Video training series on Media Composer where Lesson 1 will get you up and running in Media Composer in about an hour. Okay, so let's command and tab into Avid Media Composer, obviously Alt and Tab for all my Windows friends out there. Now before we get in and talk about transcoding, I want to point out the adapters that are on each one of these clips. Okay, now for me, I, to be honest, I don't like having these adapters on my clips. I find them to be slightly annoying, especially if you have a ton of them in your timeline. In most cases, I just want to shut them off so that I don't have to see them. And to do that, I'm just going to come down to the Fast menu. I'm going to head up to my Show Adapters category. Now, you'll see that right now, uh, All is actually not selected, even though I have Color, Spatial, and Temporal all selected. And that's okay, because what I'm going to do is just simply switch that to be None. And once I select None, you'll notice that we're just left with that green dot that we're all accustomed to. Whether we've taken a clip that's 2398, dropped it into a 1080 timeline, this is what I like to see. Okay, now let's talk about transcoding. I'm just going to pick a clip here that I didn't use, and this is a good clip to use. I didn't use this one in my timeline, and I'm just going to select it. I can right-click and navigate down to Consolidate Transcode, and I'm not going to select Consolidate. I'm going to select Transcode. I'm going to make sure that the target drive is set to be Media 1. Now, I could select a Transcode only linked media if I wanted to, but to be honest, I have one clip selected that's linked to, so I think it's good the way that it is. Now, how do we want to get this and set it up to transcode this clip so that it's actually the proper aspect ratio? Well, in this case, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be leaving the source's frame rate as it is because it's the same frame rate as the project that we're working in. And what we want to do is set the target video resolution to be a compatible resolution. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that I am on a Mac, so ProRes 422 is an option that I have, but chances are on Windows you might only have access to DNX, HR, LB, SQ, HQ, and HQX, standing for low bandwidth, standard quality, high quality, and high quality 10-bit. Now, for the purposes of what we're doing, I'm just going to select standard quality. Uh, I'm going to leave the linked source scaling quality to be full, and I'm going to bake in the source transformations of color encoding and frame flex. I could run this in the background if I want to. I'm simply going to say transcode and you'll see that this clip transcodes fairly quickly because we are obviously not dealing with a 2K Ultra HD or 4K clip. Now I could just delete this piece of media because I now have that clip as an actual piece of media. And what's important to keep in mind, I'm just going to extend my bin out a little bit here. You'll see that the video has been encoded at DNxHR standard quality. And what I want to do is choose a column. And I'm going to come down to my raster dimensions here. Where's raster dimension? There we go. And say OK. It's going to appear all the way over here at the end. But you'll see that the raster dimensions are set correctly at 1080 by 1920, which is the opposite of the dimensions for all of the other clips. So this clip is now transcoded in the proper aspect ratio at the proper frame rate as an actual piece of media inside of my Media OneDrive. You'll see inside of footage, let's actually come back here, it's inside of Avid Media Files, MXF, there it is right there. Okay. 
Now, we talked about transcoding. We've got the clips into our timeline. We talked about adjusting those clips when they're in our timeline. Let's now talk about exporting these clips to the desktop. Now, most people think that at this step in the process, I'm going to go into a big, long, lengthy discussion about how to get in and set up export settings. But believe it or not, I'm actually not going to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to head to my settings and I'm going to come down to my media creation settings. There's media creation right there. And I'm going to come over to one like, let's do a transcode and mix down. Now you're going to notice that the quality right now is set to DNX HR standard quality. Now I could change this to be whatever I want, but what's important to keep in mind is that I want to set these settings inside of my media creation tool or my media creation settings to be the type of export or the type of file rendered that I'm going to want to have. Now, I had everything set to standard quality, so I'm just gonna make sure everything in here is set to standard quality. You'll see some are set to low bandwidth. So I'm just going to apply to all, and you'll see now that everything is set to standard quality. Now, why would I want to do that? Well, let me show you. I'm gonna say okay. I'm gonna come to my timeline, I'm gonna right click, and I'm gonna come down to export. Now, instead of coming in and setting up a preset inside of my export settings, what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to export this as a same as source. And what I'm going to do is just simply call this Snapchat. Okay. Now, what's going to happen is that because there is not a compatible resolution to do a same as source export, Media Composer is going to default to the media creation settings to set up that export type. So I'm going to say save and you'll see what I mean. As soon as I say save, Media Composer is going to say, hang on a second, no clips in the sequence were found to have the resolution of same as source because they're linked to, there is no source for them. According to the media creation settings in the render tab, the sequence will be exported as custom DNX HR standard quality rather than same as source. Do I want to continue? So what it's saying is, is that whatever the render tab is set to, which is DNX HR standard quality, that's how it's going to export it. So for example, let's make sure I have my media creation settings open here. In render, if I set this to be ProRes 422 MXF, and I came down to OK, and then I came back and right clicked and said export, and I said same as source, let's call this Snapchat, you'll see that I'm now being told, well, hang on a second, everything the same that applied before applies now, except that this is going to be exported as Apple ProRes 422 rather than same as source. Do you want to continue? And I'm going to continue with the export like that. Now, why would I want to export a ProRes file as opposed to an Avid DNX HR file? Well, I'm just going to come to my movie here. I'm going to right click. We're just going to open this with, I'm going to open it with switch here. And once it's open with switch, I'm just going to shrink the size down a little bit. Now, the reason that I would want to export this let me just hide Media Composer here just so that things are a little bit easier to see. The reason that I would want to export this file as a ProRes file as opposed to a Avid DNX HR clip is that some places that I might be sending this to might not have the Avid DNX HR codec, whereas ProRes is a very common codec that is pretty much accessible across just about any PC or Mac that's out there. So this way I know that no matter who I send this to, I'm not going to have any issues with people saying, oh, I don't have Avid DNX HR, where do I get that codec from, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? Keep in mind that obviously DNX HR is becoming a much more user-friendly codec that's being accepted across a lot more places, but ProRes is pretty much accepted by everybody. Okay. So now that we've got the file exported, you'll see that I can just hit play and it's exactly the way that I had it in the Avid. Very nice. Okay. Looking good. I can now get in and let's launch Media Encoder to take this file and stream it down to something a little bit smaller. Okay, now when I say a little bit smaller, if I right click and I say get info, this clip is coming in at about 61 megabytes. So let's command or alt and tab into Media Encoder and we're going to create a new encoding preset. Now, I don't remember off the top of my head what the Snapchat deliverables are. I believe that H.264 is an acceptable delivery format for Snapchat. So if I come back to the video tab inside of Media Encoder, what we're going to do is choose the video codec of H.264 right here. Now, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to make sure that we match the source for every parameter except for the height and width. Now, again, I don't remember off the top of my head what the actual parameters are. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this up to do a 720p encode. Well, technically, it's a reverse 720p because it's not going to be 1280 by 720, but 720 by 1280. 
So let's punch that in. We're going to set the width to be 720 and the height to be 1280. Okay, we're going to leave everything else the way that it is. I'm going to limit the data rate to be somewhere around 3500. Uh, kilobits per second. We can come in and set the audio up if we want. I don't happen to have any audio on this clip. So I'm just going to leave it as uncompressed and we'll just leave the audio as 48, 16 bit and stereo. Now what I do want to do is make sure that we call this preset Snapchat and I'm going to say OK. That preset will now appear over here in our user presets and groups. I'm just going to take my clip, drag it and drop it into Media Encoder. We're going to take our Snapchat preset, drag and drop it onto our shot just like that. And I'm just going to call this clip Snapchat underscore final. I'm going to say save and I'm going to say encode. You'll see that Media Encoder will code, encode it lightning fast. It's going to appear on the desktop. Now you remember the first clip about 61 megabytes. This encoded clip again, a little bit smaller. If I say get info is about three, just short of three and a half megabytes now. If we come in and take a look, the quality is pretty good. Again, I don't remember exactly what the Snapchat deliverable requirements were. So we would obviously get in and just tailor this inside of Media Encoder to get it exactly the way that it's required. And in most cases, depending on the length of your clip for Snapchat, you might even be able to email this to them to make your life a whole lot easier. Now, as we're wrapping up, I want to remind you that if you're looking for great deals on Avid Media Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase at videoguys.com. MC101 is going to be a coupon code that you're going to love because the great team at Boris FX is offering a 10% discount on BCC10 AVX or multi-host licenses, full or upgrades, Again, using the coupon code MC101. And finally, Rampant Design Tools is offering 25% off any non-discounted product they offer in their library. Again, you guessed it, by using coupon code MC101. And finally, don't forget that if you have any questions, if you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.